And once again, you are at the ANA Evaluation Series Part 1 webinar, the first in four parts of a series on project evaluation. Um, and, and at this point, I'm going to pass it off to the Pacific Region Regional Director, Kione Nunes. Kione? Aloha Kako. Welcome to the first of a four-part series on the ANA Evaluation Series. And this one is um, going to give you some basic fundamentals of uh, what you need to know to do appropriate evaluations for your projects. It's called Jumpstart Your Organization with the Engine of Constant Improvement. And all of us, regardless of what we feel about evaluation, we go through the evaluation process every single minute of the day in everything that we do. And it provides us the opportunity to really do something uh, to improve whatever is happening in our own lives. And uh, we should take that mindset to our organization because it's very, very important. Our office is located in Hawaii, in uh, Pro City, Hawaii. And we are known as Ka'anani Elf, and we are the technical assistance providers in partnership with the Administration for Native Americans. Uh, in our ANA work, you can see our staff there. Uh, the gentleman that introduced me is Matt Ng, and you can see him over there on the extreme left in brown shirt. The next uh, person is our training specialist, Mapua Harbottle. In the middle over there is our technical assistant specialist, uh, Dennis Wall. Uh, right next to Dennis in the black is Susan White, who is also a technical assistant specialist, and myself at the far right, Keone Nunes. Was formulated to help share information with the community in general and specifically focused on the native communities in the Pacific Islands. As you can see, this is a picture of myself, Keone Nunes. I am the regional director of the Pacific uh, Technical Assistance and Training Center, and Susan White on uh, the right of your screen, who will be doing the bulk of the presentation today. She has been working with many, many uh, federal and private organizations around many different issues, including that of evaluation. And she is our uh, technical assistance specialist in the Pacific region. A little bit about ANA. ANA promotes self-sufficiency for Native Americans by providing discretionary grant funding for community-based projects and training and technical assistance to eligible tribes and Native organizations. Uh, the work of ANA is very important within all of our communities. And in order for us to be as effective within our communities as is necessary, we need to start looking at how we do things in our community, how we get the community involved, and how we evaluate our effectiveness. And this, this is good not only for our own community, but this definitely helps ANA in their pursuit to promote self-sufficiency in Native American communities. As I said before, this is the first part of a four-part evaluation webinar series. Part two will be held on June 20th, and the title for that is Why is the Wise Man, Why the Wise Man Built His House on Solid Metrics. Part three is called Mastering the Four Stages of the Evaluation Cycle. And part four 
will be how to use evaluation results to build community support and receive additional funding, which many, many of our organizations and community needs. Again, part one will be held on June 20th. Uh, excuse me, part two will be held on June 20th. Part three will be held on July 11th. And part four will be held on July 25th. We have some goals for this webinar, and the two goals that we really want to try and achieve today is to uh, define evaluation. Um, many people kind of know what evaluation is, but uh, don't really have a good understanding of the definition of what evaluation is. And it's always, always good to have a common understanding of what the terms mean. The second goal is to discuss what evaluation can do for your organization and for your project. Again, very important for all of us to take these things into consideration. We have some learning objectives. The first is to provide information on what an evaluation is and what an evaluation is not. A lot of people feel that evaluation might encompass certain things that are not necessarily true, and we're going to look at that. To present the benefits to the organizations and the projects from evaluating operations. And the third is to provide a framework for institutionalizing evaluation into overall operations. To take us to this, uh, these steps, Susan White is uh, going to do this. As I said, the majority of the presentation, and so I'll hand it over to Susan at this moment. Susan. Okay. Well, I guess Kenny cut off there. This is Susan, and thank you all for joining us on evaluation. One thing I want to um, explain is that we're not going to be talking about a scientific evaluation at all. We're going to be talking about evaluation as it impacts your operations and the projects that you manage. So let's take a look at evaluation and what it is. Okay, first of all, it's a systematic process of collecting and analyzing data. And we do that for one of two reasons, or maybe both. To determine whether and to what degree the objectives have been or are being achieved. Okay, so are we really doing what we thought we were doing? Okay, or we use it to make a decision. It's really, really important part of any well-performing organization or in even any project. But I think evaluation is really misunderstood. I think it's gotten a bad rap for a long time because of just the connotation being evaluated. And it's actually a really, really valuable tool that you can use, you know, to make your organization, your projects, your programs, your tribes stronger. All right, and to just improve the quality of our services to the community. So again, evaluation is either to see how well you're doing or to make a decision. So let's take a look at some of the myths that we have about evaluation. Okay, the first one is that evaluation is just too complicated. All right. Well, we're all evaluating, as Keone said, we're doing that every day. We're doing that throughout the whole day. And one thing that's real important to note as we talk through this, there is no absolute way to conduct an evaluation. You don't have to be an evaluation expert or an evaluation consultant. We can do evaluation, and we do do evaluation in our personal lives every day, and we just bring that forward into our work environments. All right? So it's like driving to work in the morning, and that's what our example is. Okay? We can take a look. Should we take Route 1, which is a freeway, and we, don't, we won't have any stoplights? Okay? Should we take the second route? which takes us through the mountains, and it's beautiful, and we're going to enjoy the drive? Or should we take Route 3, which probably is the fastest, but we're going to get angry at all the cars that we're driving on the road with because they're slowing down, they're not using their turn signals. We evaluate which way we want to go. 
All right, we evaluate when we go shopping. What do we want to buy? And again, it's moving this into your organization to help make your organization stronger. So it doesn't have to be a complicated process. All right, it just has to be a process that helps you to improve whatever it is you want to improve. A second myth we have is that evaluation is to judge us, all right? It, it's not necessarily. Yes, we do have personnel evaluations. We do have program evaluations. But it can be a way we use to kind of get continuous feedback and give ourselves continuous feedback to make sure that what we're doing is really what we want to be doing. Have you ever been in a project and you get so involved in the activities that three months down the road, you're kind of a little bit off course, all right? And you need to pull back. We can use it to, um, to look at, are we really going in the right direction? Do we really have a road map and are we following our road map through that? It really will help us to identify what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and then we can make adjustments as we go along. So it doesn't have to be a way to judge us. That could be one use of it, but there are so many other uses that are, that are very, very productive to making our organizations and our projects and our departments, our tribes, everything stronger and making us personally stronger. And I think you can tell by the way I'm talking, I'm talking a lot about internal evaluation, about us continually trying to improve and doing it ourselves by looking at what we're doing. The third myth is that evaluation generates a lot of boring, useless data. Well, yeah, it does a lot of times, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about doing activities that provide us with data that we can use that, may, that help us to improve our operations or improve our projects and thus improve what we're providing as services to the community. So when it, you don't need tons of data. What we need is we need information that's useful, that's relevant, and most of all, that it's practical. It's something we can use. If you had to give me a ton of charts and say decipher this and, and then, that, then you'll come up with your decision, I probably wouldn't do well. But if you said these are your weak areas, these are your strong areas, I could make a good decision from that. So those are the three big myths, you know, about evaluation. And, and evaluation, again, there's no absolute way, and it's what you make of it. So now let's take a look about why evaluation and how it can help us. First of all, it can help us to, um, in our operations, to improve our organizational and our project operations. You know, we can become more efficient, we can become more effective, and I think those are all very, very good reasons. You know, how many of you have ever been filling out a form or following a procedure and you ask the question, why? And they say, well, we've always done it this way. Well, maybe if we were doing ongoing ways of looking at it, you know, we wouldn't always be doing it this way. We may find better ways to do it. So, you know, like say, okay, you guys, I have a financial background, so a lot of my examples are going to be financial. It's just like the purchase order that requires five sign-offs. You know, did, we've always had five sign-offs. Do we really need five? Well, probably not, okay, because we only need two for internal control, okay, so maybe we don't need two. And it's just that ongoing way of looking at things to make things more efficient and more effective. And then we also want to do it to see the impact of what we're doing. Okay, back to my purchase order and impact. And then I know that's a stretch, you guys, but all right, the impact is I have internal control and then it, and the purchase gets approved, whether it be two or five. Okay? So I think you can use it to look at operations. And if I can take it to a financial level, you guys can take it to the levels that you are doing because they're a lot more fun than my finance, all right? But I also think it's a really, really good foundation for strategic planning, especially when we pull it into our, our projects and the operations of our projects. As we move forward into programs, 
we can take a look at how we can, you know, have programs that do operate more efficiently and effectively, and really we're getting better services out to our participants. Okay. We can use it when we're designing programs and, and um, you know, and implementing programs. Because if we have done an evaluation as we're going through that design, we really do have a better understanding of what it is that this project is going to entail us to do. All right? And we're also for self-accountability. Now, an example of just how simple an, an evaluation can be is I do a lot of workshops, and they're the same ones over and over, but they're on financial management. But after each one, I just sit down with myself, because clearly no one wants to talk to me about financial management training after a workshop, and I just say, what could I do better? It takes five to ten minutes. That's my evaluation process, in addition to the feedback I get. But, you know, it can be some very simple processes like that. I'm holding myself accountable, and I'm understanding why I need to change certain things with it. We can also use it to um, leverage our program strengths. You know, evaluation will help us to do that. ANA provides a good example of that. For those of you that have submitted an ANA grant application, you know that you get those reviewer comments back at the end of each one. And how many of you look at that? Oh, they said this part was really strong. We'll keep doing this. They said this part was really weak. So we need to work on that and see how to do it better. Well, if you do that with every application that you have, and I, you know, and you'll get kind of uh, a, a, an overview of your strengths in your writing. So you can use it to really say, we're really good at this. These are the areas we need to improve in. Right. It also helps you to identify any ineffective practices. Okay, sometimes we do things and sometimes, I know, hard to believe, but they aren't quite as productive as they could be. And we spend a lot of time on certain activities and we really aren't getting much impact. Well, if we have that knowledge, we can certainly change that in the programs we design in the future. And so it will help us to design stronger programs and it will help us to implement them, I think, in a much smoother fashion. Sometimes the implementation of a new project or a new program can be real painful. And if we learn from how we have done it in the past, we can maybe ease into it a little bit easier. And then again, you guys can probably tell this is the second time, and we haven't had that many slides I'm already talking about, it's a good foundation for strategic planning. It helps us to plan to be a stronger organization in the future. So, and then, the third reason why I think evaluate, or not just me, I mean lots of people think it's important, is because it will show your program impact. All right? It will demonstrate your program outcomes. Okay, what has happened as a result of us doing this project or this program? Okay. And uh, it will provide us with evidence of the effectiveness of it. So I think that's real important. Not only are we saying we did these wonderful things, we have evidence of it. So if we've designed evaluation into our operations, we will be collecting data and it will give us evidence that it has been effective or that it hasn't been effective, you know. And, that, and that's okay too because then we can look at doing it a different way to make it effective in the future. And I think the ANA gives us a really good framework to use. Because for those of you that have written ANA grants, they require you to detail the results that you expect from the project and the benefits, the outcomes. So you're almost forced to do that and how you're going to evaluate that. If we did that in all of our projects and all of our operations, whether it be a grant-funded project or administration, we really would see what's working, you know, and we could prove that this is working. And we have evidence of it. And again, what ties right into that is we have documentation of our performance and how our performance is, you know, how we are performing. 
And I think that's really good to come internally. I think it's periodically good to get an outside view, but I think we need to look at ourselves first. It's kind of like grassroots, you know, and then move out. And then the fourth uh, point on this is it provides credibility. If you have documentation, it provides credibility to, to your operations and to what you're doing. So I think those, these are all good reasons why we should do evaluation. Now, what we're going to, I hope I've hooked you in here, you guys. I hope I've hooked you in that this is a real good thing, all right? But what I want to talk about next is about a different tool that can assist you in designing your own internal systems for evaluation. And the tool is based on continuous improvement. And that's what we're really talking about, how to always be better at what we do. And the tool that I'm going to be talking about is based on the philosophy of Kaizen. And I don't know how many of you have ever heard about that, but it's, uh, it's continuous improvement. Just a little background history, okay, so you know I'm not making this up. All right, it was uh, developed by Edward Deming in Japan. He was an American, but he was in Japan. This was right after World War II. And they actually used it in industry for production processes. But what it, uh, what it was used for is for constant growth through improvement. And it's really caught on throughout the whole world as a way to always become better, you know, and to make sure that you have a process that helps you to change or to solve a problem. In fact, actually, one of the things which I thought was kind of interesting is that how many of you have ever seen those suggestion boxes for employees? That came out of this philosophy. That's what I read. That's what I heard. So let's talk about this tool. And this tool is called PDCA. All right? It's a nice acronym. You can use it. PDCA. We're doing PDCA today. All right. The P stands for plan. The D stands for do. The C stands for check, and the A stands for act. So what does that all mean? What does that all mean? Let's take a look at it. First, let me talk a little bit about PDCA. Okay? Again, it's to help you to continually change and tweak what you do so that you have better processes in place, you know, and so that you're always improving your efficiency of your operations. Another thing that, you know, it does, it allows you to see where you're at with your project, okay? And I think that's important. And it assists you in handling your work logically and systematically. Have any of you ever feel like you're in crisis mode all the time? Okay, hopefully this will help eliminate. I think we're always going to have crises in projects, you know, and that always happens. But hopefully, it puts something in place so that we're not always reacting and we're handling things kind of in a systematic manner. So let's talk about the P or the plan, the big P. It identifies what it is that you want to improve, basically. That's the first step, is you have to identify what it is. And again, it's either a problem that needs to be solving, it's something within your procedures, within your organization, services to your community, whatever you want that to be. And what the planning does is it helps you to investigate the current situation and understand the nature of what it is, right, and to look for potential solutions. So it's really a, a few-step process. Identify and prioritize what improvements, opportunities are out there or what problem you need to solve, all right? Determine what you want to accomplish in that. Determine what you want to accomplish in that. And you take a look at your current process. You have your information on that or your quote unquote data, right? And that could be sitting around the room with the staff finding it. You identify what are the causes of this, okay? And what are the potential improvements we can make? and you develop an action plan. Like an example of that would be, say that your project does home delivered meals for the elders, and they get their cold, okay? 
So, we got a problem. We got cold food going to our elders. So, what do we want to do about that? What's the cause of it? Well, we have such large geographic distances to drive that by the time we get there, you know, we frequently, the meal is cold. The meal is cold. So, we have to decide, you know, we're going to have to develop an action plan to deal with that. And what that action plan could be, it might be that we get different equipment to transport the meals. It could be that we have a different route for delivery. Or we have two vans delivering the meals instead of one. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as thinking about it and doing it. All right? And then, based on what you're, you've decided, your possible ways to improve it, all right, you implement or you change what you're doing. Okay, and one thing that's real important is that, you know, you've decided which one to take. So I think I'm going to take that I have two vans delivering it. All right? That's the action I'm going to take. And then you do it on a small scale first. You do it on a small scale first. You don't want to rip the Band-Aid on this kind of stuff. You want to try it out on a small scale. I'm sure all of us have experienced, or maybe it's just me, where you say, oh, this is a good idea, let's implement, and it just blows up in your face. That's why you do it on a small scale first, to see how it's going to work. All right? And you collect your data. Uh, and sometimes you're going to find problems with your implementation. And sometimes you're going to get some real unexpected results, too. So, but you get all that information as you're doing it initially. And that's the D of it. That's the D of it. All right. And then we, the C of it is we check. Okay? We measure the effectiveness of what we did. We evaluate, you know, the information that we have. We see if we need to modify it. We compare the new data to the, our old data to determine if there really was an improvement. Maybe I have two vans and the food's still cold, okay? And then, so I haven't accomplished what I was hoping to accomplish, all right? Or maybe I've accomplished part of it. Maybe it's warm now. It's not cold. But I still haven't gotten to the point where I want to get with this. So. Again, you look, you check to see, is it working? And then we get to our last stage, which is adopt. Okay, yeah, hey, this worked great. They all got hot meals, or we have to adapt it. Okay, we're really going to have to buy that expensive equipment for transporting because we're not there yet. Or we say this is a really bad idea and we need to start over again. And even if you do adopt, you still want to loop back into your planning phase because you're going to find ways in the, you know, to make it even better in the future and ways to continue to improve it in the future. So again, you, you act on, you plan first, then you do it on a small scale, and then you check to see what the results were. And did we resolve it? If so, or did we meet the level of improvement that we wanted? Okay. So that's always real important. And I think also important is to keep track of any lessons that you learned or any knowledge that you gained. And I always think in the surprising results because almost every change that I've ever been involved with, there's always something that's a result or that happens that totally was not anticipated at all. So that's a very simple framework for designing whatever type of evaluation you want to do. And you're going to hear about all different types of evaluations in um, the, the second and third and fourth part of this series. But I'm just wanting to talk about a framework that you can, that you can use to start putting evaluation into place. I, I want to talk about a couple more things is all how it will help you in grant development. All right. First of all, not all grant proposals require that you have an evaluation component. But I think if you, when you're doing and writing your grants, 
it gives you a, a kind of a framework that you can use to, to really make solid proposals, really put solid proposals together, all right? And um, to really look at what it is that you, you're planning for that project and come up with a way that you can measure if that plan is going to work. It also helps you to give really strong, develop really strong goals and objectives and make them very meaningful because you're going to support, you know, the outcomes from it through that evaluation process so that potential funders could really see this is going to impact the community. There is going to be a change and they're measuring it in this way. Another thing that I found in writing too is that we had our goals and objectives, but when we went to put the evaluation process in, our objectives weren't ones that we could evaluate very easily, and we ended up going back and rewriting those objectives, all right? So it, it actually made the proposal stronger as a whole. It made our objectives stronger as a whole, and it could do that for your goals as well. And again, back to my planning, this is a really good way to involve staff and some of your partners or the key stakeholders in the program planning process because you can bring them in as part of your internal ongoing uh, you can bring that in to your internal ongoing assessment. So um, so anyway, I think it really helps develop a stronger application when you're writing grants. All right. And again, let's go back to ANA. They've given us a framework for doing that. The second thing is in program operations, which I really, really key in on is to make the operations much stronger. All right. It allows you to strengthen your programs and implement the changes within a funding period, all right? Well, let me, and so that way we see what's going on throughout our project. How many of you have ever been like, you know, you got two months left in your project and you're like, oh no, we forgot to do this, or oh no, this didn't work. We've got to find another way to do it, all right? We've only got a month or two months left, okay? So I think that it would allow you to, to look at it throughout the whole operations. And it gives you a systematic way of doing it. And it provides a way to get feedback from your participants, which is, is really critical. You know, we are there to serve the community and it allows the participants, if you design that into it, to give you feedback into how you're doing. You know, and it helps you. Have any of you ever decided, designed an activity, the staff have worked really hard on it, and nobody shows up? Okay, well, maybe if the participants are inputting through our evaluation process what they like to see, we will have less of that happening. And I think also, too, there's a mindset that really happens when you bring the participants into the evaluation process. They see that you val that you value their input and when they see you responding to their input, they have much more of a vested interest in the operations of the project. Okay, so I think that's important to bring evaluation into it and bring our participants in as part of that process. Okay, I think it's important to bring the community into it because it allows you to tell the community how you're doing. Okay, and it's not just based on, yeah, our project's going great. We talked earlier, remember, about um, being, um, it provides relevant data for you to show how your project's doing. You know, and we all know that if you're not telling the community about how your project's doing, somebody else is. And I think it's better if it comes from us as opposed to random out in the community. So, I think that's important. And I'm back to my strategic planning. We can make our operations much more efficient in how we do business. And that helps us with our long-term strategic planning. You know, we can take it into operations. Do we have the foundational structure to, to expand to 15, 20 projects? All right, if not, let's get that foundational. Maybe our weak areas shored up 
so that we can move out and expand our program operations and still manage it well. So I think there's a lot of value to evaluation. I think what's, what's really key here is that they're developed by you internally. It's something that provides you with information you can use so that we don't tie into that third myth. All right, but it's something we can use and not something that's done once a year, once every three years. It's something that we can provide ongoing to help us get stronger. And, some, and again, I think it's good to get that outside evaluation, but I think that really supplements what you do. So I, hopefully you're going to be, um, participate in the rest of this series because it really will give you a lot of good ways that you could implement this. And I say set up a framework for it and implement what works for you. I think that's key. It has to be what works for you and not what somebody else thinks for you will work for you. All right? And I think we're all very skilled at operations. So I really do hope that you make evaluation a part of your ongoing operations. I, I think you will grow, you will get stronger, it will expand your funding base, uh, it will expand your services out to your community. I'm just a huge believer in evaluation and clearly hand in hand with strategic planning, using that information, not letting it sit on a shelf somewhere, and using it and really reflecting on it. As, as either an organization or as a project, as a department, as a program, as a tribe. You know, I think there are so many good uses for it as long as it's something that you've developed that provides you with the information you need to move forward and grow. So I, I, I think it's important. I hope that all of you will consider it. If you aren't already doing it, which many of you are already, and really look at your systems for it. But most importantly, I think we owe that to our communities. I really do, to provide them with the best possible services um, that, that we can for them. All right? Um, before we take questions, though, I want to just share some resources that we have, and then we'll come back to questions, okay? I think you can look for some really good guides to it um, at the ANA website, and we have that up there for you. It's the acfhhs.gov programs ANA research. And they talk about impact evaluations, which is a really good example because you can see the data points that they're gathering, and they're looking at input. And so that kind of gives you one way to look at it. And then I just have some references there from um, the different resources that I used in putting this presentation together, okay? And if anybody ever wants to talk evaluation, just give us a call. I love talking evaluation. But Matt, I'll turn it over to you now. We're going to have questions and answers now. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have a little question and answer session. Uh, if you do have a question, just raise your hand by clicking the little raise hand button as you can see on the screen. Um, and then the moderator will call you. For this session, we do not have a phone line. Um, but you can ask a question by either clicking the talk button and talking to the microphone on your computer or by typing into the chat box. And so I do and see so that we have a question have from a tomorrow question first. From tomorrow first. Um, and I'll hand um, it back off and I'll hand it back to off answer that. Susan to answer that. Okay, tomorrow. Okay, I think one of the hardest things is that this is a problem based. It assumes there's a problem and that makes people defensive from the beginning. Ideas for framing this differently? Yes, tomorrow. Um, and again, evaluation can be either problem-based, but it also could be if you, if you implement a system for ongoing improvement within your organizations and you're doing that at all times, you know, where you're getting feedback at all times, then it doesn't become like, oh, you know, we have to do something, you know, because we have a problem. 
Um, like one example I have is like when I get my audits done, I ask the auditor every year to give me something I can improve. I think if you sensitize staff to saying it's a way that we're going to try and improve what we're doing better and they see it in a positive light as opposed to we've got a problem, we have to solve it, you know, and one that allows us to look at it, how can we do this better, kind of just reframe it. And if it's something that you're doing all the time and not just when there's a problem, I think that it helps staff to feel comfortable with it. I don't think, I know it helps staff to feel comfortable with it and, and they just see that as part of ongoing operations. Okay? So again, I think when we only use it when there's a problem, that's when people become defensive. I think if we use it as part of our ongoing operations, that's when it becomes very proactive and when it, and, and again, that, that's my idea for that, but I, you know, I think it works. I do believe that it works. Okay, that's my best advice. All right, Jilla, let's see, do you, do we have access to the PowerPoint? Yes, you will have access to the PowerPoint. It will be posted on ANA's website and also on ANA Pacific Basin's website. <laughs> Jilla, can I translate this process into a feasibility cycle? For example, the circle of steps starts from the plan, however, check-in indicates another review and modification. Does that mean you can do feasibility study again throughout the process? Well, I think a feasibility study, yes, you can do a feasibility study when you do a feasibility study and you have to look at it, but yeah, I think you go back to that as your, uh, uh, hopefully the feasibility, and I'm assuming this is for, I think you're talk, referring to a business, you know, it is feasible to do this business, and then you go into a business plan. I think we move it to the business plan, but yes, you can recheck your, your feasibility and what you've determined about, you know, your, your clients, your pricing, and those types of things, and you can loop that around to see if it's, you know, if that's what's actually happening, you can check it to see if that's what's actually happening. So, not a problem with that. Oh, I think that was from John Grant. Or no, that was Jilla's question. Okay. All right, we got anything else? You guys are letting me off pretty easy here. Okay, with that we're going to turn it back over to, to Keone and he's going to talk about the upcoming evaluations. Okay, Keone, it's all yours. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, uh, remember this is the first in a four-part series. So part two is going to be in June 20th and again Eastern um, time 3 p.m. and this one webinar will demonstrate how to create or modify an appropriate evaluation of your ANA project. Learn how to choose and use reliable and valid evaluation measures corresponding to your project's outcomes and goals. Presented by ANA Eastern Region and Technical Assistance Center. So uh, keep your calendars marked for that as uh, it would be uh, a very good one to piggyback off of uh, what we presented today. The next is going to be uh, part three on July 11th and that is mastering the four stages of the evaluation cycle. Uh, evaluation is more than just collecting and analyzing data. Evaluation is a way to build capacity. A lot of people don't realize that. It is a way to build capacity. During this webinar, we will explore how evaluation data can be a tool to help compare outcomes achieved versus outcomes expected and the improve process. Uh, and it will be presented by ANA Western Region and Ta uh, Training and Technical Assistance Center. Okay, so mark your calendars for that. And part four will be on July 25th. And it, title is how to use evaluation results to build community support and receive additional funding. And for many who are 
within the field of non-governmental organizations. Uh, funding is always an issue. Uh, and so we want to we want to use this evaluation process for our own benefit as NGOs. And within this uh, webinar, it will talk about evaluation gives you an evidence-based results that can then be shown to your community and used to appropriate uh, to approach other funders. This webinar will provide you with tips on communicating evaluation results to your community and other funders. And it's presented by ANA Alaska Region Training and Technical Assistance Center. So we have a whole slew of evaluation webinars coming up. This is just the, the foundation part of it, the first part of it. And I hope you can all join us for all the other uh, three uh, workshops. Okay, before I say my mahalos and thank yous for everything, uh, I would like to uh, hand it over to Matt again uh, just to, to close us up uh, for, the, for this session. Hey, thanks, Kione. Um, so, yeah, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, once again, this is part one in a four-part series um, so in the spirit of evaluation, hopefully you can help us by evaluating our presentation skills by filling out a quick evaluation survey. Um, I also try to post that on the screen and you should be able to actually fill out the evaluation right there on your screen now before you log out. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to stop the recording and then once the recording is ready, uh, we'll post it on our website and it will also be posted on the ANA website. Um, to find it on our website, you will visit anapacificbasin.org slash webinar and I posted that there on, in the chat box. And so thanks again for um, joining us in today's webinar and if you have any questions, please visit our website and uh, feel free to ask us. So mahalo. <laughs>